Today I am going to give you a lecture on diagonalization of matrices. This is my lecture number 10, diagonalization. So let A be any square matrix of order n and A is said to be diagonalizable if there exists an another n to n non-similar matrix B such that B inverse AB is a diagonal matrix which has its diagonal element elements the eigenvalues of matrix A. A square matrix A with distinct eigenvalues may be diagonalized by transformation D is equal to B inverse AB where D represents the diagonal matrix whose diagonal elements are uh, eigenvalues while all other entries are zero and where B is the matrix whose column are consist of eigenvectors of given square matrix A. Here we have some facts about diagonalization. The very first is if the eigenvalues are not distinct, it may not be possible to diagonalize the matrix A. Means for distinct eigenvalue matrix we can easily diagonalize matrix whose all the eigenvalues are distinct. The process of finding B such that B inverse AB is equal to D is called the diagonalization of a matrix A and A and B inverse AB both have the same number of the same eigenvalues because their characteristic polynomial let us consider a characteristic polynomial for matrix B inverse AB first of all we consider the characteristic polynomial B inverse AB minus of lambda i. This is a characteristic polynomial for B inverse AB. So we initially start with determinant of B inverse AB minus lambda i, which is a characteristic polynomial for our matrix B inverse AB. This expression is equivalent to this. Here we simply pre-operate with B inverse and post-operate with B to the lambda i matrix. Further, this B inverse we choose as a common on the left hand side and we choose B as a common on the right hand side. We can easily choose B inverse and B common and the remaining one B is A minus lambda i. Further, this is the property of determinant that determinant of two matrices, product of two matrices A B is equivalent to determinant of A into determinant of B. With the help of this property we can easily write this entire expression as determinant of B inverse individually and determinant of A minus lambda i and determinant of B. So we apply this property over this value and finally we conclude if we see determinant of B towards left hand side because these are the numeric quantities they always come in commute with each other. So B inverse multiplied with determinant of B multiplied with determinant of A minus lambda i and finally this determinant of B inverse determ into determinant of B can be written as determ determinant of B inverse into B. And we know that when any matrix multiply with its inverse it produces an identity matrix and determinant of identity matrix is always I. So finally, instead of determinant B inverse into determinant of B, we have just determinant of I. And determinant of I is always 1 because in unit matrix we have all principal diagonal element as 1 and all other elements are 0. So when we determine the determinant value of any unit matrix, it always computes 1. So finally we get determinant of A minus lambda I and which is a characteristic polynomial for A. So from this calculation we observe that the characteristic polynomial for matrix A and characteristic polynomial for B inverse AB both are identical and due to this reason they possess the same eigenvalue. Whatever eigenvalue of A will be the eigenvalue of B inverse AB because they possess the same characteristic polynomial. So they also possess the same characteristic equation also and because their characteristic equation is identical so they possess the same roots 
or same eigenvalues. Since the characteristic polynomial of A and that of B versus KB are same, they have the same eigenvalues which we observed previously. And D is equal to B versus KB. Further, this D is equal to B versus KB implies if you pre operate with B and post operate with B inverse on both sides of the equation, we will find B into D and B inverse and B, B inverse and B, B inverse. Finally, because B and B inverse produce identity matrix, so then we get I into A and B and B inverse again produce an identity matrix. So finally I into A gives us A and this B, D, B inverse. So from this equation we conclude our matrix A is equal to B, D, B inverse. So in order to find higher powers of A, we multiply one more time A in order to obtain A square. So A square will be B, D, B inverse multiplied with same B, D, B inverse. Further, we apply the associative property and uh, instead of B, D, B inverse, we write B inverse B, D, B inverse. And we know that B inverse B gives us identity. So it becomes I. And further, D into I gives us D. So and D and D gives us D square. So finally, we get expression for A square, which is A square is equal to B, D square, B inverse. If we proceed in this manner, we will reach a to the power n is equal to b d to the power n b inverse. And further, d is a diagonalized matrix. So d to the power n means we simply put the n power over the principal diagonal elements, which are basically our eigenvalues of square matrix A. So this is one of the application of diagonalization because with the help of diagonalization we can easily determine any higher power of A. So let us consider, suppose we have to find uh, a raised to power 36. Then it is quite simple. We cannot multiply a 36 times a into a into 36 times. With the help of this diagonalization, we will find a to the power 36 is equivalent to b, d to the power 36 and b inverse. Where b is the model matrix, which is a non-singular matrix, which consists of eigenvectors of matrix A, and this capital D represents the diagonalized matrix whose principal diagonal elements are eigenvalues of A. And the power of D to the power 36, we can easily calculate by putting 36 power over the entire all the eigenvalues of A. So in this manner, we can easily find any higher power of matrix by using this diagonalization process. Now here we have some remark uh, left roots of the characteristic equation determinant a minus lambda i is equal to 0 we lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, dash dash up to lambda n and which are all distinct eigenvalues let the corresponding eigenvectors be capital X1, X2, X3, up to Xn and b to the matrix whose columns are X1, X2, dash dash up to Xn then b is called the model matrix now let us consider an example which illustrates your diagonalization process. So let us diagonalize the matrix which is a 2 into 2 matrix. So A is equal to 3, 4, 4 and minus 3. This is 2 into 2 square matrix. Now we have to diagonalize this square matrix which is of 2 into 2 order. In order to diagonalize, first of all we construct the characteristic matrix of this square matrix A and which is determinate square matrix A minus lambda I. So square matrix is 3, 4, 4 minus 3. Minus lambda into 1 0 0 1. I will simply multiply lambda is a scalar multiple of this unit matrix so gives us 
lambda is 0, 0 lambda. Finally, we subtract the corresponding element in order to obtain characteristic matrix for A. So 3 minus lambda, 4 minus 0, 4, 4 minus 3 minus lambda. This is desired characteristic matrix. Characteristic matrix of given square matrix A. Three minus lambda, four, four minus three minus lambda. This is the desired characteristic matrix of given square matrix A. Now, now we determine the characteristic polynomial of this square matrix A, and which is just determinant value of this is characteristic matrix. So, the determinant value will be determinant of A minus lambda i. 3 minus lambda, 4, 4 minus 3 and minus lambda. Now we just cross multiply the entries in order to find the determinant value of this characteristic matrix. So, 3 minus lambda multiply with minus 3 of minus lambda and 4 fours are 16. For, for this, which is a 9, minus 3 lambda and minus plus 3 lambda become vanish, 0 and lambda lambda gives us lambda square and minus of 16. So, finally we get lambda square minus of 25. This is our characteristic polynomial for square matrix A, lambda square minus 25. Now, now we construct the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation for given square matrix A, which is determinant value of A minus lambda i is equal to 0. As soon as we put our characteristic polynomial is equal to 0, it gives us our desired characteristic equation for a square matrix A, and which is lambda square minus of 25 equal to 0. This is characteristic equation. In order to find the eigenvalues or characteristic roots of this equation, we just find the values of lambda, which is lambda square is equal to 25, and finally we get two values of lambda. One is 5, the other one is minus 5. So these two values are known as eigenvalue of given square matrix A. Now corresponding to these two eigenvalues, we calculate our eigenvectors. So let us consider lambda 1 as 5 and the other eigenvalue is lambda 2 equal to minus 5. So there arises two cases, case 1 and case 2. In case 1, when lambda 1 is equal to 5, first eigenvalue is lambda 1 equal to 5. Let us consider eigenvector x1 corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 5, x1, x2. As we know that ax is equal to lambda x, this is universal. So, we replace x with x1 because we have our first eigenvector we represent by capital x1 and instead of lambda we write lambda 1 because this is our first eigenvalue matrix A Minus of 3 times of x2 
and 5x2. Now, now we simplify these two equations. On left hand side we have 3x1 and on right hand side we have 5, of, 5 times of x1. 3x1 minus 5x1 gives us minus of 2x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 0. And from the second equation, 4x1 is minus of 3x2 and 5 times of x2 gives us minus of 8x2 is equal to 0. Now, further this, both equations represent the same equation because from here we get 4x2 is equal to 2x1 after simplification we will observe 2x2 to cancel out 4 and finally x1 upon 2 and x2 upon 1 so our desired x1 is 2 and x2 is 1 so 2 1 is the desired eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 5 similarly we find the eigen Vector for the eigenvalue minus 5 or lambda 2 is equal to minus 5. Similarly, we find the eigenvector. And with the help of these eigenvectors, we construct our model matrix B. matrices which is adjoint of B divided by determinant of B. 
using this formula we can easily find v inverse which is inverse matrix of v by entering v divided by determinant of v and determinant of v is quite simple 2 1 minus 1 and 2 2 2 is a 4 plus 1 gives us 5 we just cross multiply 2 to the 4 and 1 and minus 1 gives us minus 1. When we put negative sign between them, it becomes minus minus become plus. So finally we get plus 5. So this is the value of determinant B, right? Now, now we calculate the adjoint of B. And you know uh, how to determine the adjoint of 2 into 2 matrix, which is quite simple. We just interchange the principal diagonal element. Suppose this is your B and we have to find adjoint of B. So we just interchange the element in the principal diagonal element and the change the, we change the sign of other diagonal elements. Because here in principal diagonal we have similar elements, so it remains same. Otherwise, if there are different elements, definitely we interchange them. So your adjoint of B will be 2, 2 and we change the sign, instead of minus 1 we put 1 and for 1 we have minus of 1 and this is adjoint of B now we divide finally this adjoint of B by determinant value which, is, which we already calculated 5 and using this formula we determine our B inverse so our B inverse is 1 fifth of 2, 1, minus 1 and 2 now, now we calculate our D capital D which represent the diagonalized matrix D stands for diagonalized matrix and which is given by a standard formula which is B inverse A into B where A is our given square matrix B which consists of uh, eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1 lambda 2 so B consists of capital X1 capital X2 and B inverse which we recently find B inverse. So multiply B inverse A and B, all three matrices, the resulting matrices, the matrix will be capital D, which is a diagonalized matrix, and again this capital D is a 2 into 2 matrix because the product of 2 into 2 matrices. So final this D matrix is a diagonalized matrix in which the diagonal elements are same eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, and remaining other elements are 0. So this capital D represents the diagonal matrix whose elements are the eigenvalues of So in this manner, we diagonalize any uh, square matrix. Whether your matrix is 2 into 2 square matrix or a 3 into 3, we proceed in this manner. So, first of all, we find characteristic matrix for any given square matrix. Then we construct a characteristic polynomial. And thereafter, we can a characteristic equation by putting characteristic polynomial equal to 0. And finally, we calculate the roots of characteristic equation, which are the desired eigenvalues for the given square matrix A. And corresponding to each eigenvalue, we calculate our eigenvectors. And finally, with the help of eigenvector, we construct a model matrix B, which is a non singular matrix. And we find its B inverse by using a traditional formula adjoint of B divided by determinant of B and as soon as we get the value of B inverse A and B we finally multiply them in order to diagonalize our matrix and which we represent by D so finally we conclude this D mat diagonalized matrix consists of uh, eigenvalues in the principal diagonal and all other entries are zero in this manner we diagonalize any matrix so let us consider another example. This is just uh, almost similar to the previous example, but here in, instead of 2 into 2, we have 3 into 3 square matrix. So our matrix A consists of 3 rows and 3 columns. This is 3 into 3 matrix. Now, now we discuss the diagonalization of the square matrix A, which is of 3 into 3 order. First of all, we find the characteristic equation and you know how to determine a characteristic equation we determine determinant of A minus lambda i where lambda is a scalar quantity i represents the unit matrix or identity matrix and A is our given square matrix of 3 to 3 order 
As soon as we put its determinant value is equal to 0, this gives us a desired characteristic equation. And after expanding this 3 into 3 determinant, we get a cubic equation in terms of lambda. So lambda cube minus twice of lambda squared plus twice of lambda equal to 0. And this cubic equation obviously possesses three values of lambda. One value is 0, 1 and 2. You can easily determine these values by using a Eaton trial method. You find one of the root and thereafter you divide the entire cubic equation with that linear factor and reduce it into a quadratic expression. And by using Sridharacharya or factorization method, you can easily find the quadratic equation values. So, if we simplify this cubic equation, we get three values of lambda, which is 0, 1, and 2, and these are the three eigenvalues for the square matrix A. Now, now we discuss three cases because we have three eigenvalues. So, let us consider a case 1, where the eigenvalue lambda 1 is 0, and corresponding to this lambda 1 equal to 0 eigenvalue, we consider our eigenvector capital X1, and which is X1, X2, and X3, which has to be determined. Now, now we start with the assumption A capital X1 is equal to lambda 1 X1, where capital X1 is our desired eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1, and this lambda 1 is our first eigenvalue, which we uh, 0. So instead of A, we write the entire matrix which is 3 into 3 order. This is column matrix x1, x2, x3. And for lambda 1, we have 0. And after simplifying this system, we get three equations 11x1 minus 4x2 minus 7x3 equal to 0, 7x1 minus 12 of x2 minus 5 times of x3 equal to 0, and 10 times of x1 minus 4x2 and minus 6x3 equal to 0. Now using this three equation, out of three equations, we use two equations only, and with the help of two equations, we can easily find our all three unknowns x1 and x2 and x3. This method we already discussed in the previous lecture x1 divided by, in order to find the value of x1, we just hide the column of x1 column in the two equations and we put the remaining coefficients in this form. For x2, we have negative sign. Again, and for x3 we have plus sign, and finally we simplify the determinants by just cross multiplying thing like minus 5 into minus 4 gives us plus 20, minus 2 into minus 7 gives us plus 14, but we put negative sign between them. And similarly, we simplify these two determinant values, and finally we obtain uh, 6, 6, and 6 because 20 minus 40 gives us minus 20, 55 plus 49 gives us minus. 6 but minus minus become plus 6 and here again we will get 6. So if we simplify the ratios, finally we get x1 upon 1, x2 upon 1 and x3 upon 1 which gives us the eigenvector 1, 1, 1 corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 0. So this is our first eigenvector corresponding to first eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 0. Now we discuss the case 2. See, in case 2 we have our second eigenvalue which is 1, lambda 2 is equal to 1. Again, we consider our eigenvector as capital X2 which consists of three elements, small x1, small x1, and small x3. Again, we start with AX2 is equal to lambda x2. Here, we have lambda 2x2. And because our lambda 2 value is 1, so we replace lambda 2 with 1. We write the value of A which is our given square matrix of 3 to 3 order and x2, capital X2 is our second eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 2 is equal to 1 and finally we simplify the system and we get three equations and among three we choose any two equations in order to find the value of x1, x2 and x3 now we have values for uh, in the denominator of x1, x2 and x3 where x2 is negative and we simplify in the usual manner 2 into 2 determined value. So finally we get minus 1, 1 and minus 2. And this is the second eigenvector <coughs> corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 2 equal to 1. And which is 1 minus 1 and 2. Similarly we determine the third eigenvector case 3 lambda 3 equal to 2. So our third eigenvalue 
And let us consider capital X3 as the third eigenvector. AX3 is equal to lambda 3x3. We cross it in a similar manner. Instead of lambda 3, we write 2 because our third eigenvalue is 2. And multiply this 2x1, 2x2, 2x3. And finally simplify the expression because on right hand side we have twice of x1. And here we have 11x1. So 11x1 minus 2x1 gives us minus 9x1. Similarly, we modify the coefficient of x2 in second equation. <coughs> and coefficient of x3 in the third equation because on right hand side we have twice of x3 and here we have minus 6 times of x3. So as soon as we transfer twice of x3 on left hand side, we become negative. So minus 2x3 and minus 6x3 gives us minus of 8 times of x3. So in this manner we modify our equation and finally we get three equations. Among three equations we choose any two equations in order to find the values of x1, x2 and x3. So finally we get x1 divided by minus of 8, x2 divided by minus of 4, x3 divided by minus of 8. And if you multiply with the negative sign, the ne negative sign becomes positive and 2, 1, 2 will be the desired eigenvector corresponding to third, third eigenvalue lambda 3 equal to 2 which is 2, 1, 2. So this is our exact third eigenvector. Now, with the help of these three eigenvectors, this is our first eigenvector, 1, 1, 1, capital X1. 1, minus 1 and 2 is our second eigenvector. And 2, 1 and 2 is our third eigenvector, corresponding to third eigenvalue, 2. So with the help of these three eigenvectors, we construct our new model matrix B which consists of all three eigenvectors and we find our B goes. See here B is not 2 into 2 order matrix. B is a 3 into 3 order matrix. So we find our B goes by using formula adjoint B divided by determinant B. But for adjoint B we have to first we have to find cofactor of matrix B and then we transpose it. Because in case of 3 into 3 matrices we determine our adjoint B by first determine the cofactor of B and then we transpose it that will be our desired adjoint B and divide finally adjoint B by determinant of B. So B must be adjoint of B divided by determinant value of B and using this formula we find our B goes and finally in order to diagonalize the given 3 into 3 square matrix we use the same formula B inverse AB. So this is the value of B inverse a, the given square matrix, and B, which consists of eigenvectors. And finally, we multiply all three 3 to 3 matrices in order to diagonalize them. So, after multiplication, we observe this is the diagonalized matrix, capital B, whose principal diagonal elements are clearly our eigenvalues of A, 0, 1, and 2. And all other elements are 0. So, in this manner, we uh, diagonalize our 3 into 3 square matrix. This is the next problem. Again, diagonalization of a 2 into 2 order square matrix. In order to diagonalize the matrix, square matrix A of 2 into 2 order, first of all, we find its characteristic equation, which is quadratic in terms of lambda because our square matrix is of 2 into 2 order, so we get quadratic equation in terms of lambda. And after simplifying this equation, we get two values of lambda. One is 1, the other one is 2. And for these two eigenvalues, we calculate our eigenvector. Let us consider capital X1 as an eigenvector for lambda 1 equal to 1. In a similar manner, AX1 equal to lambda 1 X1. And finally, we get two equations and because both equations are identical so we choose any one of them and we finally get first eigenvector which is 3 2 which is corresponding to lambda 1 equal to 1 so this x1 is an eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1 equal to 1 now case 2 we consider capital x2 is the second eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 2 equal to 2 and we proceed in the similar manner and both the equations are again identical so we can take any one of them and finally we can get 1 1 as an eigenvector so this is our second eigenvector and with the help of first and second eigenvector we construct our model matrix B which consists of 1 1 and I think 3 2 
So this is our desired model matrix B, which consists of first and second eigenvector x1 and x2. Again, we find its B inverse with the help of adjoint B upon determinant B formula, and finally we diagonalize it B inverse KB, and which gives us diagonalized matrix D because its diagonal elements are eigenvalues one and two, and other other entries are zero. In order to find the higher powers of A4, suppose we have to find A to the power four or something A to the power five, then we use this diagonalization process. Instead of multiplying A five times or multiplying A four times, there's a short trick. With the help of diagonalization, we can easily find A to the power four. See how we determine A to the power four. This A to the power four is equivalent to B D four B inverse, which we already discussed. A to the power n is equivalent to b d to the power n b inverse. So using this formula, instead of adding b f four, so we replace n equal to four. A four is equal to b d four b inverse. Here we have values of b and b inverse. We already calculated b inverse. And instead of d four, see for d four we just put four power on the principal diagonal elements because all other entries are zero. So D4 is quite simple. It's easy to compute D4. So 1 to the power 4 and 2 to the power 4 gives us 1 and 16. So finally, A4 will be the product of these three matrices, and which is minus of 29, 45, minus 38, 46. Similarly, we find A5 using the same formula: B, D5, B goes. This time we put 1 to the power 5 and 2 to the power 5. This 2 to the power 5 gives us 32. So this is. Our desired A5 value minus 61, 93, minus 62, and 94. So with the help of diagonalization, we can easily compute higher powers of any matrix. One problem, which is based on the Euler random theorem, find the characteristic equation of matrix A, and as find the matrix represented by this huge expression, A is to power eight minus five times of A is to power seven, seven times of A to the power six minus three times of A to the power five plus A to the power four minus five A cube plus A square minus two A plus I. Here, first of all, we find the characteristic equation for even square matrix A, which is of three to three order. And further, we calculate the equivalent expression for this huge system. Instead of finding for multiplying A eight times, A into A into A times, A into A into seven times, we find the equivalent expression for this huge matrix expression. We comprise this uh, entire system into a smaller one. So first of all, we find the characteristic matrix for a square matrix A with the help of this formula, determinant of a minus lambda i, which is lambda cube minus five times of lambda square plus seven lambda minus three is equal to zero. This is characteristic equation for square matrix A, and by using this characteristic equation, we reduce this huge system into a smaller one. So. According to the Kähler method theorem, we know that every square matrix always satisfies its own characteristic equation. So, this characteristic equation is clearly satisfied by the square matrix A. Means instead of lambda, we can easily write A A cube minus five times of A square plus seven times of A minus three times of I is equal to zero. So. According to Kähler method theorem, the square matrix A must satisfy its own characteristic equation. That's why we replace lambda formed by A, A cube minus 5A square plus 7A minus 3A equal to zero. So this is given, right? Now we deduce the smaller expression for this huge quantity, which is represented in matrix form. How we try? 
transform this huge expression into a smaller one with the help of this because this is our a cube minus 5a squared plus 7a minus 3i equal to 0 and this is our given expression which we want to reduce in a smaller system like a squared plus a plus i. How we proceed? First we choose four terms, first four terms. a raised to power a, 5, minus 5 times of b to the power 7, 7a6 minus 3 twice time of a5. Out of four terms we choose a5 as a common throughout. So instead of a5 we have just i, 3 into i. For a to the power 6, we choose a to the power 5 as a common, so remaining is just a. Out of a to the power 7, we choose a to the power 5 as a common, so remaining is a square. And out of a8, we choose a5, so remaining is a cube. So this is almost same, this is exactly same expression. So if we choose a to the power 5 from the first four terms, the remaining expression is equivalent to this, and which is, according to our assumption, is equal to 0. So we simply put instead of this expression 0 and 0 into a5 become vanished. Now, now we discuss the remaining terms. Again we choose 4 terms a4 minus 5 time of a2 plus a time of a square and minus of twice a. Out of these 4 terms we choose a as a common and why we choose a common because we require an expression like a cube. So out of a4 we choose a as a common so remaining is a cube. Uh, from a cube we choose a as a common, so remaining is a square. From a square we choose a as a common, so remaining is a a. And here twice of a, we choose a as a common, so remaining is just i. Right? Now, but this system, this remaining quantity is not exactly same as this expression. So we compensate something like instead of minus of 3 times of i, we have just minus of 2 times of i. So we just add i and subtract 1i. So this minus i and minus 2i gives us minus 3i. And we split this 8a into two parts. The 8a can be written as 7a plus a. And why we split 8a into two parts? Because we require 7 times of a. So we rewrite this 8a as 7a and a. And we introduce 1i i and we subtract our 1i and we add 1i. So minus 2i and minus i gives us minus of 3i and the remaining i is as such and this is again we get the same expression which is a cube minus 5a square plus 7a minus 3i and this is 0 according to this assumption so the remaining is just a5 into 0 which become vanished for this we have 0 plus a plus i and finally we multiply this a inside the bracket so a and a become a square into a plus i. So for this huge expression we have equivalent metric system and which is a square plus a plus i. And in order to find the value of this entire expression we simply calculate a square which is just multiplication of a into a and then we add a and identity matrix i of 3 to 3 order. So resulting matrix will be a square plus a plus i and which is 8, 5, 5, 0, 3, 0 and 5, 5, 5. So this, this is equivalent expression for the huge expression which we, uh, we are given in the coefficient and it is equivalent to this smaller one. Thank you.